No sweet lover can resist laddus and the ones I'm bringing to you today are not only delicious but healthy too. Excited? Hi guys, this is Ruchi Bharani and welcome to Rajshri Food, your ultimate destination for 100% vegetarian recipes. And today, I am going to bring to you healthy and warming gond ke laddus. So as you must have guessed, the most important and the hero ingredient of the recipe is gond or edible gum. They look like nice, pretty, amber color stones. So let's begin with the recipe. So I'm going to start with frying the edible gum or gond. There are a few things that you need to pay attention while you're doing this step. One, take little ghee at a time and make sure you fry them on low or medium heat. Don't be in a hurry to cook them quickly as they'll pop up but they will stay raw in the center. So let's start with heating around 2 tablespoons of ghee. And let it warm up. Once the ghee has warmed up, into this I'm going to add in 2 tablespoons of gond at a time. Keep stirring it. Flip it over and cook it from all the sides, otherwise it's going to stay hard in the center. Once they've popped up completely, we're going to remove it out of ghee in a plate and drain out the excess ghee. If you feel that the ghee is too hot after frying the first or the second batch, turn off the flame for a few seconds and then add the next batch. Or if you feel that the ghee is finished, then add some more. Let's fry another batch of gond. Keep stirring on it constantly and flipping them over. This gond is a powerhouse of energy. I've also made a recipe using this called gond ke raab. So do check it out. Add in a little more ghee since it's over and I have some more gond left to fry. The last batch of the gond is also nicely fried and now I'm going to get it off the pan. Clean the pan with a tissue since there are small bits of gond which are stuck on the pan and I don't want them to brown. Let's continue cooking. Again heat a tablespoon of ghee in the pan. Once the ghee is nice and hot again, I'm going to add in 2 tablespoons of melon seeds. Also, 2 tablespoons of poppy seeds as well as the nuts. So, I have 2 tablespoons of sliced pistachios here, 2 tablespoons of almonds as well as 2 tablespoons of cashew nuts. Roast these ingredients on low heat. Once these nuts are slightly fried, into this I'm also going to add in 3 tablespoons of desiccated coconut or dry coconut. Whatever you have access to, you can use that. So I have some dry coconut that I've grated here and I'm also going to fry it with these ingredients. You just need to be a little patient while you're roasting or frying these ingredients. Once the coconut is golden brown, you can get it off the flame. These ingredients are nicely roasted and I'm going to remove them in a blender. Also, I'm just going to let it cool down also completely in the blender while I'm roasting a few more ingredients. While the roasted seeds and nuts are cooling down, I'm again going to heat up a little bit of ghee. And in that, I'm going to saute or roast one cup of fox nuts or makhanas that I've chopped into small pieces. On low heat, you need to fry these as well. So while these are roasting, 
I'm going to quickly just pulse these nuts to make it into a coarse powder. This is done and let's remove it in a bowl. Let's check on the fox nuts. These are done. Let's get them out of the pan into the grinder and let it cool down slightly. So now we're done with roasting all the nutritional ingredients and now we need some base for the laddu. So the base of the laddu is your normal wheat flour or your atta. So to roast the atta, I'm going to heat up about four to five tablespoons of ghee. The ghee is nice and hot now. Into this, I'm going to add in one cup of wheat flour. On low heat, keep stirring this continuously. If you feel the mixture is too dry, you can always add in a little more ghee. But first, let it cook at least for a good two to three minutes. The wheat flour has been roasting since about five to six minutes and I'm going to add in some more ghee into this. The wheat flour is going to take the maximum amount of time to roast. So be patient and keep stirring on it constantly. Once it nicely roasts, you'll be able to see that the color has changed to a nice golden brown as well as the aroma also will be completely different. The flour is nicely roasted, but before I turn off the flame, I need to add in a few more flavoring ingredients and the main flavor comes from dry ginger powder or salt powder. So one and a half teaspoon of dry ginger powder. I'm just going to give this a mix and roast it for a few seconds. Next, I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of nutmeg powder as well as one teaspoon of cardamom powder. This is done and I'm going to turn off the flame now. Let this cool down completely. You can even remove it in a different bowl or a plate in case you feel the pan is too hot or just leave it under the fan to let it cool down completely quickly. While the flour mixture is cooling down, I'm going to quickly grind this makhanas as well. So just pulse it. This is done. It can be a coarse powder. You don't need to grind it till it's a fine powder. Now time to pound the gond or the edible gum. It's very easy. I'll show you how. Just take a little bit in a plate. Take a steel bowl and just crush it with the bowl into small pieces. Do not use the grinder to do this step because the gond will grind into very small pieces or a powder and become extremely sticky. So you have to do it with a steel bowl. Just pound it till you get these small little pieces of it. Let's add this in the bowl. And in the same way, I'm going to pound the remaining edible gum. This is just so much fun to do. This is done and I'm going to remove it in this bowl. Let's give all these dry ingredients a mix. Also, I'm going to add in one one fourth cup of powdered sugar into this. Make sure there are no lumps of the powdered sugar and it's nicely sifted. Give it a mix. And now let's add in the flour mixture. It's become quite dark brown as well as a lot of ghee is oozing out. So make sure you add in all that ghee as well. So scrape it out from the pan 
nicely. Now let's get in our hands to mix all these ingredients. If you feel that the mixture is too dry to shape the laddus, you can always add in a few spoons of hot ghee. Make sure the ghee is nice and hot. Mix this properly. Let's shape these into laddus and then I'm just going to roll them in a little bit of pistachio flakes. Just a few on top to add some colour. This is not the only sweet thing about this episode. At the end of the episode, I'm going to give a shout out to the best answer from a viewer. So stay tuned. In this way, finish rolling all your laddus. I'm going to arrange these in a beautiful platter. Garnish with some pistachio flakes. So take your bite of these high powered laddus and do let me know how they turned out. Till then, take care. Bye bye. In the chocolate cappuccino episode, I'd asked a question How far would you go to relish your coffee? Kriti Tamakuwala said that she adds coffee while making her brownies. Well, that's sweet and I would do that as well. Gone laddus are a delicious way to keep warm during the winters. What is your delicious recipe to beat the winter cold? Do let me know in the comment section below.